Hello everybody, Steffi here from The Makers. Um, how are you all? It's um, It's been a quite a shift in the weather. If you don't know what to talk about, let's try the weather. Um, it was so hot and then it suddenly has become autumn. Um, just as you expect British summers. So I don't know where you are, but um, um, I'm sure you've got a, that, another story to tell all together. I'm, um, I'm actually normally watching the YouTube uh, comments on, um, on another screen, but my... Um, the, the whole thing has, has decided to update the app, so I can't see yet who is watching. But I know quite a few are waiting for our very popular and charming little gardening mouse, which is of course why we're here today, um, to find out how to make him. Now if you've got our kit, you can make along, and if you don't have it, I'm sure you can sort of cobble up some of the materials that you might have in your stash. And my computer is still going round and round and round, um, um, downloading the app altogether afresh. Um, so in the kit, let's just talk about that quickly, the kit is here you get um, all the tools and the materials and the gardening tools, accessories, uh, therefore, to make the little mouse. It might consist of different gardening tools, but in any case, they'd be very useful for digging up the garden and, um, and getting it smoothed over, pick up all the weeds and get um, a really good little um, busy gardening mouse going. I'm wearing my uh, Daisy t-shirt um, because the mouse obviously has been very very industrious in the gardening efforts and therefore um, I can show off the flowers that he has grown. I've picked our first uh, strawberries this morning from the garden outside. Um, they, they were green forever and ever and ever but I think they needed that one day to, um, to go nice and um, um, red, that's the word I'm looking for. Right, I'm on I'm on the um, chat now. Let's have a look. So we've got Bridget here, Ava here, um, Gina, hello everybody, Sandra, Rachel, Laura, um, Sylvia, did I say that already? No, I didn't. Jane is there, um, Karen, Susan, now, I think the first one I've just seen, uh, Susan, you're, you're not in the UK, so we want to know what your weather is like, where you are. Lorna, uh, Vam Vampire Venom, Ellie, um, no, that is Vampire Venom. Elaine, Bridget, oh yeah, I said that already. This is a weekly felting fix for me. Hope to stay awake with the heater on and um, as it's being 10 p.m. over in Australia and winter. Well, Actually, heater doesn't sound too bad here right now either. Um, then we've got Jane, everyone from a chilly, wet Cornwall. <laughs> we've been in um, on holiday in Cornwall and it was 15 degrees for the whole of the duration of our camping holiday nonetheless. And we persevered walking around in shorts because it was holiday and in holiday you wear shorts. Um, Jane is there, another Jane, oh no that was Jane, Sam, oh my goodness, okay, Gabriella, hello from the Czech Republic, tell us what the weather is like in the Czech Republic, Gabriella, Andrea is there from South America, tell us what the weather is like in South America, it's got to be better than here, Dawn is there, um, so we've got, um, ah, Gina says it's sunny but very breezy here in Lincolnshire, um, very windy here, says Jane, and you're down in Devon, I think. Is that right, Jane? Um, Heather says, hi, Steffi and Alicia and everybody. Uh, Elizabeth, hello, um, says, hi, breezy and colder in Brecon. Um, okay. Okay, sorry, I had to just read that. Uh, so Lorna says, my boyfriend will be interfering with my watching. He is fixing my last bit of back fence. Tell him to do it later. Julie says, oh, fluff happiness. Hello, fluffsters. Um, what else have we got? Um, who else have we got? Any more weather? Any more locations that are people sharing? Trisha is there. I'm sorry I couldn't wait so my mouse is ready made, but I'm going to watch and see how I should have made it. I'm sure you've done it perfectly, Trisha. And Trisha, of course, is up in Scotland. Um, oh, Pamela is there. Pamela in the US. H how is the weather in Oregon? Tell us. Good morning um, to you. Right. So um, let's have a look um, what you can win. Well, we know what you can win today. You can get yourself a 15 
a pound gift voucher, but let's find out how you can actually do it. Oh, goodness me, my um, screen had just frozen and now it's alive and all the messages are coming through. So I'll just have a quick look. Um, lots of you have made the mouse already, I've seen them. As uh, Susan says, it is so, so hot and heavy afternoon showers every day right now. Well, hot, hot with heavy showers, that sounds perfect. When you get hot, stand outside, get cooled down, wait for it um, to subside, and then you get hot again. That sounds like my perfect summer. Um, Andrea says the weather here is like paradise. Oh, <laughs> that's just what I want to hear. Not. I want to hear bad weather. Bad weather. Um, Marilyn is there from Hampshire in the USA. Uh, oh, yes, Somerset, Jane. Somerset, not deaf and very close, but not quite that close. Um, oh, oh, Vampire Venice says, I can't see the weather. What is the weather is like here near Gatwick? So ex external windows in my section of workshop. So basically, that sounds like the perfect room for British weather. Just don't look outside and you never know what you what you what you don't want to see. Um, hotter than usual for even Florida summer, says Susan. Um, Lovebra is sunny and windy. OK, right. Let's see what you can win. Um, no, we know what you can win. Let's find out how you do it. So tell us a funny, serious or interesting story about your gardening moments. Yes, just let it let it um, um, rip. Tell us your gardening stories, moments, whatever. Um, give us a bit of a, a reason to laugh if you want to. Uh, maybe the serious ones might put a smile on our face. Maybe they're funny afterwards. Mm -hmm. Or something that we really want to know. Let's make it like a gardener's... Um, gardener's um, education session or something like that. I don't know. Maybe we can learn something from it. Right. Um, and of course, what you need to do is pop your story in the comments. And then uh, at the end of the live stream, we will pick a random winner. You get um, uh, to get you get the 15 pound gift voucher by email. It's a code that we send through to you. So you have to get in touch with us at info at the makers. Of course, we're repeating this live stream on Thursday which um, gives everybody another chance to win the £15 gift voucher. And I'm just trying to do the maths because Thursday, I think, is the 30th of, of June. So it's the day before the unboxing on Friday. Right, I think you've got that now. Let's have a look inside the kit. And for this, I need the overhead camera, which I am getting now. Right, here we go. Right, so let's see inside. It's um, it's the usual um, format for our kits. Always get the full color instructions with a left-hand side tape measure there. Uh, you get your brown wool. This is mushroom um, New Zealand merino. We also have had it in the past as Australian merino, but this is the New Zealand merino, lovely and soft. Um, you get the flesh pink, which you mix to make a lighter, a lighter shade of the brown. There's loads there. You'll have lots left over. You get the green for the hat. You get the little waistcoat. There's going to be a little knack of how to uh, make the waistcoat. You have your eco wool mats and they come in. They come in twos. They need to be used on top of each other and you take that label off. You also get your pipe cleaners, two pipe cleaners to make one mouse. And that's um, sort of a, um, a sandy brown color. You also get an envelope with the mouse ice in there, two black glue in ice, glue in ice, that's it, uh, in, in, um, in four millimeters, a little terracotta pot and your flower arrangement. Now the flower arrangement, I've got to tell you already straight away, just scrunch it up, stuff it in, and you've got a ready-made plant pot with a flower in there, so you can um, choose which color you want at the at the top. And this particular kit, I didn't know this, has got these two gardening tools. So you might have a spade and a and a fork, or you might have there's all kinds. We have we've used them in all combinations. And then we have here um, three medium felting needles. Right, that's everything in the kit. I'm going to take all of this out now. Put the kit back onto the display empty and then um, we can crack on. So what you do need extra that I um, isn't here, you need some colorful Sharpie pens, ideally green and then maybe some pink and uh, yellow, something like that because you're gonna be decorating your own little um, base coat for the mouse. So this doesn't isn't a printed fabric that you're getting. Lots of people thought that. No, you make it yourself. Own design, a unique design for your gardening mouse. 
and um, you will also need a little bit of glue to glue in the glue in eyes. I could use these eco wool mats, but I'm saving them because um, they can go straight back to the workshop. I am using a um, our eco wool mat. No, that's not the eco mat. It's the earth friendly felting mat. I'm having one of those days where I'm saying everything wrong. I'm using the um, firmicide on the top um, for for this particular project because I have to do a lot of flat felting, and that it look, works better when you've got the slightly firmer top um, on top and I'm keeping the softer one on the bottom. And first of all, you do need to uh, separate your pipe cleaner into half, two equal halves. Um, so if you don't want to use scissors, if you don't have scissors, if you haven't got pliers, then you can actually um, get it to separate by just jiggling and wiggling it a, a little bit. Eventually it will break. There you go. So you've got your two halves um, two equal halves now. And I'm going to show you how to wrap the wool around the um, pipe cleaners. So first of all, you tease off a strand of wool. You can actually see, can you see that the fibers are running this way? So if you tease off a strand of wool, this will this will be enough for two. Um, then you can you get a nice consistent um, strand. You can tease it even more if you just pull it. Without pulling it apart, you can tease it that way. And then you're going to bend in one set of the half pipe cleaner so that the um, the the ends are pointing inwards to, towards the middle. So you've half the pipe cleaner but not in the way that you just felt folded in half, you're actually bending the ends in. And then holding on to the wool with your with with a non-wrapping hand so that you've got a bit of tension here. You then begin to fold the wool over the pipe cleaner end leaving a tiny little bit like a centimeter of that little pipe cleaner um, um, bend exposed and you start wrapping the wool around it, working your way all the way along that folded pipe cleaner. And ev with every wrap, I'm working really close to my pipe cleaner, so I'm not doing this from here, I'm doing this really close from here. With every wrap, you pull it tight. What you can also do is turn the whole thing round and just allow the pipe cleaner to grip onto the wool by you twisting the pipe cleaner between your finger. That's just another way of speeding up that same process and allowing that tension to hold tight where you are wrapping the wool. Now I'm going to not use even all of that and just allow the last wispy ends of that wool to grip into the wrap that you've already got there and you should end up with a with a set of arms with a little pipe cleaner sticking out that side and that side. Now you, if you were one of the first to buy our uh, mouse kit, you might have slightly lighter pipe cleaners. We run out of that color and it doesn't, it's no longer made. So we have to resort to the darker color. Um, it doesn't matter. It just means that your mouse has been really busy digging in the soil. Um, and now I'm going to repeat that with a second set. So bend, bend it into the middle, use your will hold on to it with one hand with the other hand begin wrapping it pulling it tight as you do so so you get a nice neat wrap we don't need to do any needle felting at this point because you're wrapping it so nice and tight the wool will grip into the chenille of the pipe cleaner and when you get over the top again if you go over the top of the wool itself then the wool will sort of stick to itself because you're putting that nice tension on it and the little wispy fibers will sort of um, hook into each other and uh, that will keep it nice and neat. So two sets here of uh, legs and if you have um, made your first one it looks really messy then use that as the legs. If you've made another one that's really neat then use that as arms. I have just run this workshop uh, this weekend gone at the Creative Craft Show and um, it is a workshop where really ideally you want an hour and a half but uh, we, I'm going to manage this in an hour because I'm Speedy Gonzalez the mouse and um, if, you're, if you're finding it hard to keep up then please don't fret, just sit back, enjoy watching the live stream and then you can go back um, uh, watching it over again and pause at the moments where you need to catch up. So don't worry about trying to do this really fast and spoiling your enjoyment and your mouse. Just um, go back to um, where you need to go and catch up. Right, so I've got two 
um, sets here of legs or arms or whatever. It's hard to say because we're making almost like a, a, a human mouse. So it could be just legs or it could be arms and legs. Right, so the next thing I'm going to do is, and I'm going to go on the overview camera again, is I've got my pipe cleaner here, the pipe cleaner length, the other one that I haven't halved. I'm going to bend it in by about one third. You don't need to measure it, just use your, um, just gauge it by, by, by eye. So bend it in. And what I will now say is, because it helps people to understand what you're doing, this little bit here on the top is become will become the nose of the mouse, okay? So therefore, that end here is going to be the tail that will stay uncovered with wool and just be used as in, it, in itself. Now, what's special about these pipe cleaners is that they are, um, we call them luxury pipe cleaners because they have an extremely dense cover of chenille. So when you bend them, even when you bend them, you can't see the wire. It just stays really nice and fluffy. So they, they are really um, suitable for using um, with, with these little mice so that even when you, you don't have to wrap the ends because they, they, look, um, they look nice and neat. So no na uh, nasty wire showing. And then you're going to um, twist the end of the the um, the bend of the pipe cleaner that you have done. So twist it um, up, down about by four centimeters. In any case, make sure you've got about five centimeters of wire sticking out. So it looks a little bit like that. So you've got these twisted around each other, twisted around. Um, yeah, just just literally twisted like that. And then make sure you've got about five centimeters of that shorter wire end still. Um, sticking out. If you have absolutely no idea what uh, five centimeters or four centimeters are, as I said, on our instructions you've got a tape measure on every single um, left hand side of the page so you can always look on there um, for, for the exact measurements if that's what you want. Right, so the next thing you're going to do is you're going to decide what's your arms and your legs I'm going to use this for the legs to look slightly and uh, like like less tidy. So these will be the arms. So you're inserting the arms now into this um into this contraption of of the pipe cleaner. So the 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 twist comes down to here. I'm fitting the arms in there and um as 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 tightly up to the top as possible. I'm going to twist the bottom of that um pipe cleaner um construction shut. So now the arms are trapped. Make sure that it's the same length so that they're right in the middle. So you've got same length arms and then you're going down twisting the pipe cleaner as you did right at the top by about two centimeters and you're going to add the next set of legs in exactly the same way. So now I've got a really short pipe cleaner here. So I've pushed them in there so that's what it looks like from the side and then I've got to twist that shut as well. And if you've got any um, pipe cleaner length left, then just twist it upwards um, towards the, the body so that you only will let be left over with that one long pipe cleaner, which will become the tail. Now, when you look at it that way, you think, how on earth is that going to be a mouse? Looks like, I don't know, looks like nothing at all. Um, but as soon as you, if you, if you, as soon as you bend this, you don't need to do this to make the mouse, but as soon as you do bend it into shape, you will see where you're going with this. So you can see that this is going to be the mouse, right? So that we need to obviously build up the head and we need to add more uh, meat to the body and um, and that will be the mouse. So at the moment, I've just got this uh, strange looking contraption, but it will become the mouse and you can actually, or now you can get sort of a, a, a grasp of what, of what uh, might be happening next. So you've got your little mouse contraption there. It's a very, very skinny mouse at the moment. It's a stick mouse, basically, a stick insect mouse. And um, I, I will continue from there. I'm just going to give you a bit of time to catch up. Um, whilst I'm having a look at the comments here, uh, trying to find where I've been. Oh my goodness, there's lots of gardening stories. Please do give us the thumbs up if you're watching this uh, right now, um, then uh, that would be great. We need way more thumbs up. I know there's um, over 50 people watching. I need that many thumbs up. Come on, guys. And if you're not subscribed to our channel yet, then um, what are you waiting for? Subscribe. I've also got a message to those of you 
who are watching but don't know how to comment. I met a few people recently and they say, I watch your um, YouTube tutorials but I don't know how to comment. Now, you don't need to have a membership to YouTube. It is completely free. Our tutorials are free. You All you need is a Google account and a Google account is also free. So just set yourself up a Google account if you haven't got one yet. And if you do have one, just log into it. So just go into um, google.com and, um, and sign into your Google account. Most of you are signed in all the time because that's um, how you get your emails. Um, YouTube is owned by Google and therefore you need to have a Google account but the tutorial is completely free and once you're logged into your individual Google account then you should be able to see the live chat box and you can click on it and then you can participate and win yourself a £15 gift voucher so hopefully that has made it clear enough but uh, it all it's all important that you have a Google account for all of this. Right so um, let's have a look. We've got lots of weather weather notices coming through. Um, let's get back. Yes, that is a good point, Alicia. We are not, so this is a limited edition um, for this mouse kit and we've only got a handful left. I mean, literally a handful. So if you haven't got one yet and you want one, then it's time to order it right this very minute. We'll probably be sold out by the next time this live stream will be uh, streamed on Thursday. Um, so, oh my goodness. Okay, so now I'm getting temperature sent through in Fahrenheit, which means absolutely nothing to me. I need to know what it is in um, 56 degrees Fahrenheit, 13.33 Celsius. That makes no sense. If it's really hot, I expect it to be somewhere like 30, 30 degrees Celsius, um, but not 13. 13 is actually quite cold, but maybe that's what it is. Um, is it hot in Oregon? If it's hot, it must be a different number in Celsius degrees. Uh, Sam says, my husband was digging a new flower bed and he went to pull out a root. The root turned out to be a three foot wide and 18 feet long. It took all day to get it out and a lot of energy. Wow, that is, I mean, I, I do get the feet thing. Three foot wide, that's as wide as a, as a that's wider than a ruler. That's, that's a meter, isn't it? A meter. Um, so it's a yard, basically. Is that right? And um, 18 feet long. Um, well, I know 16, six foot is quite a tall person. So that's three people on three tall people on top of each other. That's amazing. Vampire Venom says, before I could talk, I was helping dad and granddad on the allotment by weeding everything they had just planted. <laughs> when I was asked who did it, I made a noise and pointed at granddad. <laughs> yeah, blame granddad. Julie says, I tried to garden, but there are far too many spiders. My head can only cope for so long. Oh, yes. Yeah, I, I know what you mean. They, um, they, they, yeah, there's those little fat little ones that run across the soil, isn't there? Um, so uh, we've got a Rose joining us. Hi. Oh, Fandamir, I'm making a zebra and have to finish my orca. After all this black and white making, this mice will be nice. Oh, yes, that will be nice. Pam says, um, oh, hi, Pam, Pam Duthi. I saw you were getting into fairies. Yeah, yeah, we, we, will, we will convert you. Oh, this is so adorable, great kit. Thank you. Uh, Marilyn says, perfect, beautiful day for gardening in New Hampshire, USA. Um, Julie says, once when I was gardening with my father, we planted some lupin seeds. Now, every time I see lupins, it reminds me of him. Oh, that's nice. Rose says, good gardening weather in Massachusetts too. Trisha says, when I had a stroke, I put myself down on top of a grow bag so that I wouldn't fall and hurt myself. How clever of you. My husband thought I was joking and pretended to plant myself and was waving at me and laughing. <laughs> oh, <dear. laughs> oh my goodness. I bet you have a, a little laugh at that now, even though at the time it must have been horrible. Elaine says, love gardening and growing plants from seeds, but I ha but have a a fern that is over 100 years old was in my nan's house then moved to my parents house and has now lived with me for 15 years well no pressure there to try and keep that one alive i've never heard of anything like it that is absolutely amazing i i don't think um i've ever had a plant well obviously not i've never had a plant that lives that long because i'm not that old but um but still i've never even heard of it that is quite amazing um 
Trisha says, we both laughed at that now that I'm getting much better. I know, and you're so much better. Um, oh, van der Meer, I love my garden. Yesterday I was showing someone my garden and she pointed at a flowering patch in the pond. I totally hadn't seen that plant flowering and only noticed the water lilies next to it. Oh, there you go. I have to invite more neighbours to find all the flowers in your garden. Carol says, had trouble getting comments to work. Haha, -ha, you're doing it now. Hoo -hoo! Did that help telling you about Google? Hope so. Pam says, the makers, thank you. I know I have been slacking. I had to get into it again, but I had a big project on using all makers fibres. You, nobody ever accused you of slacking, Pam. This is, these are all your words. We, we love that you do um, the makers boxes, but we would never, never put pressure on you. This is your box. You do whatever you like with it. Um, so um, yes, please, please don't, don't say that we, um, or even think that we think you're slacking. Um, Rose says, have missed your Sunday makes, Pam. Oh, there we are. There's the pressure now. Sorry, not from the makers, but from other people. Lynette says, I got home one day to find a gang of eight lambs was wasting my rose bush. So it ended up looking like a mushroom. Oh, but lambs, come on, they look really cute. Um, um, and Pam has missed everybody else as well, of course. Vampire Venom, well, not, not a garden, but when I lived in Colchester, I used to walk th um, the mile circle regularly, had some heavy rain and light flooding, but I waded into one of the lakes to take pictures of water lilies. Oh. Um, yes, that's right. Uh, Pam posted a little uh, fairy, I think it was the flower garden wool tops, very beautiful colours and very neatly needle felted um, onto her own page. So um, you give give your page a, um, um, a plug, Pam, just put it in the comments here so people can find you and then I can hopefully uh, read it out as well because I cannot remember what it's called now. Um, okay, it, 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 if you put it in the comments, I will say it out loud. Ava says, I don't have a garden where I live and I don't have green fingers, but I love making fluffy fiber flowers. Well, there you go, that's good enough for me. Um, cutting my lawn with scissors. Are you actually? I hope not. <laughs> Lily says, hi, late to the party. Never too late, better than late than never. Carol says, I can't join in. My husband has set up his computer for a Zoom meeting in my crafting space. Are you kidding? Tell him to go away. Um, Marion says, in 2001, I ordered some plants by post and they sent me a free gift. I just looked like a stick, but was supposed to be a Christmas tree. It, I, it was very, I was very skeptical. I, I planted it and now it's about nine foot tall. That's amazing. Um, Right, there are loads more comments, but I can't read them all because we need to get on making the mouse. Okay, here we go. Mouse continues. So um, the way that you tore off fibers before, you're going to do this again. But this time you can be a little bit more generous because we need to build the head of this mouse up now. Bend the uh, pipe cleaner out of the way for this, but don't be keep bending it too often because as you've seen by um, just jiggling it back and forth, it does eventually break and you don't want a mouse with a broken arm, worse still, with a broken neck. What you see me do now is I am building up the layers on, on the mouse's head, concentrating, and this is, by the way, slightly different from the instructions, I will do it every time, um, concentrating on the back of the head because the mouse head at the back is slightly um, bulkier than at the front, where it goes pointy towards the nose. So I'm building this up. I still haven't used my needle. And when you get to a point where you feel, oh, let's felt this down, then do take your um, medium felting needle and just stab gently into the mouse's head. Sounds terrible. Um, but try and avoid the wire. So only start stabbing when you've actually got enough wool to stab into, unless you've got such a mess of a fluff that you could maybe do it a little bit sooner. And, um, and what I should have done first is to go around the joints with a bit of wool, but I haven't done that. That's what it says in the instructions. So I'm going to do that now. So um, the head's not necessarily finished, but it's good enough for now. So I'm now just going around the joint um, of the mouse. I'm gonna work my way around the body, down the body. I'm gonna do it the same with the legs as well. Just going around weaving in and out of the legs um, 
it's not it's not essential to do it but I just thought I'd do it because it says it in the instructions now I'm going to build up a little bit of um, bulk around the body so going over here again and you can see just with a few wraps the mouse suddenly has got a shape that it didn't have before so that's um, happens really quickly it's a it's quite a quick way of making things because you've got the size instantly um, at the ready there work with neat little um, wraps neat wool batches and um, and and do also go around the neck again um, to make sure that the body and the head are connected build up a bit more go one more time around there and then around there and now I'm going to felt this down. So this is um, sort of the, the basic shape completed. As soon as you fold this um, in, so the, put the head down so it looks forward, fold the arms in a little bit, and um, well, my the feet I've already fold, folded forward, so it's really important to get that mouse into a position now because you can see now where it needs adding wool. And I'm just going to felt it down a little bit around his body first. Right. Lots of little stabs. It's called mouse acupuncture, just in case you're worried that any mouse was damaged during this um, live stream. It's not, it's a therapy, mouse therapy, mouse acupuncture. He likes it. It's, um, yeah. There you go. If um, for whatever reason you lose the little nose because the wool sort of slipped forward, you can get it back by just stabbing into the into the face a little bit, so straight into the face, and the little pipe cleaner tip will will poke poke, poke out again after a while. So nothing's really lost there. So you can tell that now and then I hit the wire with my needle, which is why I'm not going very hard into the shape. I'm trying to stop mostly into the surface because I know the wire is never far away from the tip of the needle. If you hit into it really hard, you might actually break your needle. First it might bend and then it will break. So it's best to just go steady with that needle and just stop um, a little bit more gently. So what I like uh, with the mice, I like giving them these big, big saggy bottoms. And for that, all you need to do is make sure that the tail goes down to the level of where the feet are and uh, make sure that the legs are not pinched together. And you're just going to add a, a layer of wool around the lower body, right the way down to where the legs, the feet are, so that you are now um, giving it sort of the appearance of of, a, of saggy bottoms, a bit like a bit like a little bit of a pear shape. So it's wider around the base and then narrowing narrowing towards the top. And then of course you've got to felt this down as well. Make sure that the tail is in the middle of where the um, where the where the legs are, and it needs to be on the same level as the feet as well. And then you can repeat that process, of course, if you need to add another layer. I'm just going to felt this down now to put into the right shape. And it just gives the mice quite a cute little look, like they've got um, all the, the, the fur is sort of gathered, gathered around the, the, the legs, basically, like little saggy bottoms, as I call it. Just felt it down. You can felt this down really firmly. You've got absolutely plenty of wool. So if you're a solid felter, go for it. Actually, looking at the mouse like on my felting mat like this, it almost looks like a real one. It's got the nice, um, almost the right color as well. So if you're squeamish about mice and they start looking a bit too real, then um, just giving you giving you the warning. Um, once once you give them a hat and the gardening tools, they don't look like real mice anymore. I mean, to us, they're real course. Be interested to find out what you call your gardening mice. There. Did anybody do this as a Father's Day gift? Did anybody make a gardening mouse as a Father's Day gift? I wondered. So you could also just go around the base where the um, 
where the pipe cleaner uh, comes out so that you've, you've neaten that off, off a little bit. It's not necessary, but just in case you're turning your mouse upside down and it bothers you that it looks a bit weird down there. And I've just split the wool to go up around either side of the tail. And um, in many ways, that could be the finished shape of the mouse. And you've got the same amount of wool left again to make another one almost. So if you just wanted to get the um, pipe cleaners, you can definitely make another one with that wool. Um, just saying. Right, we just need to make the ears now, but that won't take very much wool at all. So there we have a little, a little mouse ready um, to do some gardening, I guess, once he's got his eyes and his ears. There, little mouse coming to say hello. Not quite able to see you yet, but and can't hear you either, but it's definitely a beginning. So um, let's have a look. What else I can tell you about the makers? Um, so we will be going, our next show is not until August, which is the Festival of Quilts. I'll be running lots of workshop sets at the NEC. So um, maybe have a look um, if you're interested in coming um, to that. It's, um, I wanna say, oh, what is the show? Hang on, I've got it written down somewhere. So it is the 18th, 19th, 20th and 21st of August. So it's a four day show at the NEC. Um, and um, we also have still got spaces on our, um, on the lion workshop. This is the, this is the lion that is made by Joan Prowse and we are hosting the workshop. We're offering two separate dates, two weekends. It's a non-residential workshop. And it's the 10th and the 11th of September or the 17th and 18th of September. If you're interested, please message us info at themakers.co.uk. And I can tell you now, this, this is not, we won't be able to do this as an online workshop because it's literally um, um, just at our workshop, in our workshop. However, I will talk to Joan to see if, um, if we can um, have also Zoom um, guests joining. I, I, I'm going to talk to her. I think she's been on holiday, so I will talk to her when she's back. Right. Um, I'm going to have a quick look who's, um, who's got another gardening story here. Um, Sylvia says, my sister put some Japanese an anemones in my garden, which I didn't know would spread everywhere. Look beautiful in flower, but nightmare to control. I don't actually know what Japanese anemones look like have to look that up later. Um, oh, Lorna says it's her boyfriend that cuts lawn with large scissors. I've heard of people doing that. It's just, I think that must be an, an English thing or British maybe even. I don't know. Do they do it elsewhere other than in England? Um, Jane says my mum and granddad were planting wallflower plants in someone's garden. At the end, mum found her wedding ring had fallen off. Oh no, they had to pull up each plant, 300 of them, until they found it. That reminds me, in, um, we, we moved um, our from our house that we lived in for about 20 years, three years ago, and I do remember in our early days living there with uh, young children, my husband I had such a massive row that both of us took our wedding rings off and chucked them in the hedge and we never found them, they're still there. We have had new ones made. So um, yeah, we, we yeah, they're still there somewhere. So one day somebody will find them with our names engraved and our children's names in there as well. Just saying. Happens. Right. Um, so I'm going to go to the next bit now. And that is making the ears for the mouse. Um, in fact, I'm not. I've got to put um, a funny shape on top of the mouse's head because I need to fit the hat on this particular mouse. So to do this, you take a wisp of wool and you roll that up into a little sausage shape with your fingers like that. You can just felt it down a little bit on your mat, but I wouldn't bother too much. Just felt it down just so that it doesn't pop open there. And then you put this on top of your mouse's head and it looks really weird. I, I, I know it does. So um, go with it, go with it. Put it on top of the head, felt it down. So now you've got um, like a little 
I don't know what it is, what to call it, but it's just a little weird shape on top of your mouse's head. And then you take another wisp of wool. So maybe something like that. There, nice and thin. And you put this over. It's like pulling the wool over your face, literally, or over your eyes, but he hasn't got any eyes yet. Fit it over the head and felt it down so that that um, contraption that you put on top of the head becomes one with the whole shape. And you do this by just felting the wool down, that sheet around, stab it down onto the mouse and, come and join up the, the whole shape to become part of the whole mouse. That's sort of a technique that I use quite a lot if you're adding um, a, a, a shape to um, if you're adding a shape to another shape and you want to make it one big normal one one big shape without noticing that you've added something else just add um, a patch of wool like a sheet over the top and then you can just felt it follow the shape underneath it but felt it round the edges first and that sort of gives the the mouse um, a slight domed forehead, which is what we need to fit a hat on. It's quite a, he's got quite a small head, but that's okay. We just make the hat a little bit smaller then as well. There. So from the flat head, he's now got a slightly bulged head. And once that is on, we will get to the ears. Because he's wearing a hat, Usually the ears of the mice, we have them on top of the head, but on this occasion we put them to one side, each to each side, both ears on one side. And um, for this you need to take a wisp of the brown wool and a wisp of the pink wool, and you're going to mix that just into a very lighter, sh a tiny little bit of a lighter shade. So it's it's almost like you're doing this to um, to have the, the fur covered mouse ears with a bit of pink skin shining through. And then you split that in half because that's enough for one ear. And all you're doing is you felt a semicircle onto that um, sheet and fold in the wispy ends around the line that you felted and leave wispy ends at the bit that where the semicircle is open and then lift it off your felting mat gently and felt it from both sides. So you can now hold on to these wispy ends and make that ear a little bit more shapely and certainly felt it down to become a bit more firm. Keep repeating that. I don't step very deep into the mat because I want to felt the wool. I don't want to felt the mat. And keep doing that. until you've got a little disc shape that looks relatively neat. There. Neaten up the edges a bit. There. Little, little disc shape for one ear. And now I'm going to repeat that with the other wisp that I've got here. So semicircle. Fold the wispy uh, bits in but only around the edge that you felt it. And then pretty soonish, once you've got sort of a little shape established, take it off your mat and then just work on shaping that disc a bit more, holding on to the wispy ends so you don't get your fingers stabbed in the ear itself. It's quite a convenient handle. And then felt it down. These are marginally lighter from the uh, usual brown. You can make them a lot lighter if you want to. The ears that you're making, they might be a lot bigger. I have made ears of all kinds of look. These are massive, big ears. Um, some of them are smaller. There you go, nice little ears. And, um, and once you've made the ears, you've got to attach them to the head in the following way. Make two the same size. That's, that's a good start as well. So have them the same size, yeah, that's good enough. If you've got lots of wispy ends, you can tease, tease some off. The main thing is that you now open up these wispy ends. So you've got a, a, a little, it's really a very marginal little platform there, or a little flat base. And 
that means that you can fit it onto the side of the head with, a, with these wispy ends spreading out over the head and just felt it down so you can see get it down so you can see where the ears are you need to keep the top of the head free this mouse looks like somebody's nibbled on her ear it does happen neaten that up a bit and uh, you can shorten the ears by stabbing along the ear at a shallow angle into the head you can also make a little um, imaginary ear hole there by just stabbing into that area where um, where you imagine the, the ear shape so slightly into um, so just stab into that area here and it brings the ear forward a little bit as well and then uh, repeat this on the other side the trick is always to get the ear fastened on so that they're symmetrical so just get it on first and then check that it's the same before you fasten it on and it, it will be hard to pull it off right here we go so little little ear coming along nicely here on the other side as well They look almost more like human ears sticking out on the side. That is if you've got sticky out ears. But they're on the side of the head, that's what I'm trying to say. Rather than sitting on top of the head. Okay, here we go. Little mouse has got her um, his or her ears on. When you work on one part of the mouse, it's often that you'll need to go over another part again. This particular mouse I'm making has got quite a small nose, so um, I, um, yeah, it's just they all will turn out completely different. So there we go. That's what it looks like from the profile. Stabbing it a little bit more. If you have a fine needle, then uh, you can sophisticate your um the the surface a little bit more by getting it really really smooth but that's what the mouse looks like now so from the side um from the back from the other side and from the front he's got his little nose so it's gone a bit out of shape here you can turn it slightly up it always makes every animal look very cute when you turn the uh, nose up certainly give your mouse the sort of the straight standing look and um, the arms can obviously be posed however you want them to be posed. There's still um, a chance to add more uh, body wool over the top if you need to. But what I'm going to do next is I'm going to fasten the eyes in. For this, I need the eyes in uh, that little paper envelope. And these are the four millimeter eyes and I need some glue, which um, I haven't got here. I have got glue. Oh no, no, no. I just need to go and get it, but that's fine. I'm going to um, quickly show you that um, we are getting ready for our summer retreat and I tell you the details whilst I'm getting the glue. So I'm not going away. You might just hear my voice fade away a little bit. But the summer retreat is basically from the 15th to the 17th of July. Um, we have uh, reduced the price so that bell tents are now a hundred pounds cheaper and you get your own and um, they are not it's not a glamping type of um, um, camping it is it is still camping but you will have a camp bed in your um, bell tent and um, and the facilities are really quite close together will make it look nice as well so you you don't um it, it it will feel special and of course we're planning on making eric a viking or if you've got another large um figure in mind then we can adapt that too all the um food and um materials and tools are included you don't you only have to bring yourself you don't even need to bring your felting tools unless you've got some some lucky needles or a lucky tool that you need to bring or one that you can't travel without then of course um, you can bring that but it's not necessary you will however have to bring your own bedding and towels um, right that um, kind of makes sense I guess and I've got the glue now so we can um, give the mouse some eyes he can hear you now well he can't hear you because nobody can hear you but he can hear me and I'm going to uh, show you how to add the eyes in 
So for this, you're using your felting needle unless you have an awl and you're actually putting the, um, the eyes in the side of the head. However, it was really sweet because um, at, the at the workshop, somebody put the eyes in the front of the head and that looked, looked really delightful. So I'm going to try that for a change. So on the instruction, it tells you on the side of the head, make a hole with a needle, add the eyes in, and then do the same on the other side. So just poke a hole in. That's all you're using that needle for. So if you have an awl, then do that. I actually quite like that. It looks quite sweet with the eyes facing forward. Look at that. Instead of having it on the side. So more to the side. So these are more forward. Um, yeah, I do like it. Look. It's up to you. You can do them. Put them on the side like here. Or you can give them more of a human quality by having them facing forward. Sweet. I like it. Right. Once the eyes are in, you're going to take your um, glue and all you're going to do is add a dab behind the eyes. So if you've got a great big bottle of glue and you can't do what I'm doing here with a, um, a little nozzle, then maybe use a, a match or something like that just to apply a little bit of glue behind the eye and push it back in. Whatever you do, do not take out the um, eyes and then add the glue on the back of the eyes and then try and get them in. Glue and wool is never a good combination. It really gets sticky. And then if you try and poke a pin in, it's a nightmare. There you go. Little, oh, he looks so sweet. Look at that. There. He's got his eyes now. He can see. He's looking around. What can I see? Mm. <laughs> and um, so I'm going to show you now how to make his hat because the hat is quite important um, when you are gardening and the sun is shining and keep the birds from um, cooing on your head as well. There you go. Don't know where that came from, but it's a useful um, thing to have a hat. Okay. So the hat is done in a, in a, um, again, you have got way too much green wool here. So you could de definitely make another two, if not three hats, take a pinch and you spread out um, the wool in a disc. And I'll give you the measurements because, um, so it's about, um, you make you make a flat shape um, of about five by um, six point five five point five centimeters wide by six point five centimeters long. I've no idea if that is the measurement, but if you do need measurements, then this is what you're you're doing. And uh, again, you're folding felting um, in that shape around. So you're making a um, that 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 measurement of the uh, ladies flat. And you so you're felting it by five by six centimeters. So you so the sides are about half a centimeter on each side. Fold these in as you did with the ears, but this time all the way around. So you've got a slight oval shape basically on your felting mat. Felt it down and then lift it off as soon as you can because you don't want to keep it on your mat forever. So it might go slightly out of shape as you lift it up. Turn it round and felt it down a little bit more just to firm it up and you really just want to stab into the into the surface of this um, shape so if your mouse is slightly smaller as mine is i think that hat is probably a little bit smaller neaten up the edges i'm going to turn this round again because i i do want to felt this so that it um it's nice and solid looks it looks neater turn it round again Felt it down a little bit more. And you, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to work on the visor only. And to do the visor, you're just going to stack into the side, sort of about um, one centimeter away from the edge here. Do that on the other side as well. I'm turning my felting mat rather than lifting it off. And then felt that again. So this becomes the visor of the hat. So you just want to felt an indentation take it off again and then felt it on the other side as well maintaining that shape and once you've got a nice nice neatly felted hat shape there albeit flat you're going to fit it onto the mouse so it's it is felted it's quite thin there's a bit of a weak patch here but it doesn't matter um, so you're going to put it on your mouse so that the visor is obviously in the right place over his eyes like that. And that's where you're going to fasten it on first. So just stab 
into the hut and into the mouse's head so that you now can let go of it and um, he's got his hat on here um, and then you're going to push the shape behind his head make it fit the main thing is that you're felting this on around the edges first and you really want to sort of maintain that 3d shape of the hat um, remember you've made that extra bit of the head so that it can sit inside it can it, the, the hat itself will sort of crinkle up a little bit but that looks quite natural because that was that's what happens with real hats as well you've got sort of slight pleats in there so that's what you're doing here and the hat sits behind the ears so you've got a, a little a little hat ready on your mouse's head if the visor is a little bit too long, you can shorten that by stabbing a long side into it like you did with the ears. So make it a bit shorter, but don't put it too much out of shape. And you do need a nice, a nice visor because you um, don't want the sun to get into his eyes. There. So there's the little hat. Don't need to felt it too much on top. Just um, felt it down. There we go. Little hat. Some They're all different. Never can do the same twice. That's why I don't do pet portraits. I'd, I'd, I'd never do the, that actual, the actual pet. I'll do something else. Um, I'm not that of a precise felter. And um, that's fine because we can't all be the same. And then the next thing you need to do is, is this little waistcoat. And that's really simple. And whilst I'm doing this, maybe um, Alicia can pick a winner. But before I'm doing this, I'm just going to go onto the front camera, show you the little mouse. He's got his hat on now. There you go, with the ears sticking out. Um, and he's ready to receive his little waistcoat so he's not naked anymore. Just have a quick look at the comments again. I'm going to start from the bottom up, which is never a good idea, but I, I am doing it. Um, are you liking him all? That's nice. Uh, Gemma says, two years ago I bought a Japanese cherry blossom for my garden. It had three branches and still hasn't grown more than four flowers. Oh, I was going to say Japanese um, plants grow very fast, but not this one. Um, oh, Gina's calling her mouse um, Cyril. Um, when uh, recently when I was on um, Create and Craft, did anybody watch that? Um, people were ringing in to call the mouse and somebody called him Doug, and then um, if he hasn't got his spade on him, he's called Douglas, <laughs> which I thought was hilarious. <laughs> so yes, you get it, right? Digging with a spade, and if you haven't got your spade, it's called Doug. He's called Douglas. I love it. Um, and then somebody called him Alan Titchmouse. I thought that was really sweet as well. Um, yes. So we have a winner. Um, the winner today on the 28th of June 2022 during the live stream on YouTube at 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. is Dawn. Dawn, well done. Give us uh, uh, your um, details by emailing us info at the makers with two s's.co.uk and then we will re return um, your email. No, we won't return your email. We will reply to your email um, with the voucher for the, with the code for the £15 voucher. Right, do you want to see that waistcoat, right? So let's go quickly over view. So first of all, I'm, um, I don't know if, yes, I did that on, right, on the instructions as well. You just trim the edges of one long end. So you've got round edges of that felt piece that is in the kit here. And then you fold it. Um, I, I'm going to do this slightly different from the instructions. You fold it in, so you're making the waistcoat first, and you're just going to cut the armholes here. So just cut out a little a little um, shape on both sides. I've done this so often, I don't have to measure this. I'm just going to do it, and um, it will be very similar. So you've got a little, um, a little shape with holes in there now, and I'm going to color it in now because now I know where the armholes are and all you need is a green um, I'm using sharpie here but any felt tip pens will work just make a few stalks for grass well you can do whatever you like actually it doesn't have to be the same pattern what I'm doing a few more in a different color of green just 
painted in. Don't, don't think too much about it. The top part here will be folded over, so don't go really high. And then um, start putting some flower heads into it. I'll just put a few insides here first. And then petals around it, however you want to make these. It really isn't that um, um, much of a, an, a piece of artwork. Um, you could even have one stalk going up slightly higher on the back. Maybe have a, a couple and put some um, other flowers on there. Got a yellow here as well. Use pinks and orange and whatever you want to. And color these in any, any old way. Two there. Maybe let's have some of those here as well. You can, they can just be yellow. Don't, they don't need to have petals more here. There, that'll do. Just a little flower meadow. And um, all you need to do now is fit it on him. Arms through, either side. Collar down. Oh, covering up the flowers, see? I went against my own advice, serves me right. And, um, and then you can fasten it in the middle. If at this point you think, I want a fatter mouse, I want, I want the, um, the waistcoat to pop open, you can add more wool to him. You've got loads of wool left. Um, you could felt this shut by uh, just using, I've, I've used a little bit of green in the past of the, from the hat because there's some left over. And just felt that down here, maybe. Felt it down so that it goes um, all the way, even through the mouse if need be and that will um, and you can pull it off afterwards if it's gone into the mouse just make sure it stays um, fastened to the other piece of felt and then um, somewhere here we've got the gardening tools so these gardening tools that uh, there there's a um, another version is that it? no there's one version that has got um, a, a handle on the top that can fit around the hand but if you've got a, a handle that fits inside the hand you can just put this inside his front paw and there he is with his uh, rake ready to um, rake up the garden um, there's a hole here um, I've only got hoes and forks, um, but you also there's also some of you might have had spades and rakes as well. Um, oh no, there's a rake and there's a fork. No, have I got a fork? Yes, there's a fork. So the one thing I don't have is the spade, which has got the 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 curved handle and that fits onto the hand rather than through the hand. And that's it basically. So these are um, our little gardening chaps. They're gonna be busy planting more strawberries and um, flowers and digging up the garden. Share with us what your, what your little mice are doing. And remember, you can watch this again on um, Thursday, um, on the 30th of June at 7 p.m. over on Facebook for another chance to win a 15 pound gift voucher. And of course, this stays on our YouTube channel as a tutorial, um, but you can't win anything. You just watch it. However, you've got the advantage of just cutting out all the um, the gibberish that I talk and go get straight on with the with the important bits of needle felting, and that's basically I think all there is. I'm just going to tell you that the next live stream that's coming up is actually this Friday, so it's an odd one. It's not a Tuesday. It's the first of July, where we will be unwrapping our subscription boxes, namely the dolphin, um, the um, um, moon fairy, and um, I have and and the coastal. Um, and the coastal path for the surprise box. That means that there are still a few days left to get your budger uh, cubs and your ladybird fairy and how does your garden grow surprise box. So don't miss out on that. And then on Tuesday the 5th of July, we have got an octopus kit that you can buy to make along to make the octopus um, or maybe use your stash and then on the 12th of July we are actually doing the Moon Fairy from the July sub box um, and the only other thing I need to say probably are the upcoming sub boxes so you, in case you want to get the Badger Cups you will know that you are getting the Dolphin in uh, July the Giant Tiger Moth that's a 2D um, well with 3D aspects felting and then also the Bat for September 
or you get the ladybird fairy this month in june and then next month the moon fairy in july the fairy circle fairies in august and the sapphire fairy in september um, and if you want the um, surprise box then this month you can still get it for a couple of days um, up until the end of june 2022 is the How Does Your Garden Grow surprise box, in July the Coastal Paths, in August Busy Bees, and in September Indian Summer. And um, I don't want to talk about the Advent wreath because I don't know if we've got any left, but um, if, if, if this is the first time you heard about it and you thought, oh, oh, oh I missed out, then go and have a look um, if we've got any left. But if not, sorry, I haven't advertised it too much. I should have looked beforehand same goes for the advent calendar i know that we literally they flew out like there was no no tomorrow that's all i've got to say thank you very much for watching um just see have you have you all given us the the likes and the thumbs up i don't think you have but if you haven't just do it quickly now and um and also subscribe to our channel and then you never have to miss out on any of the live streams and um remember that we're restreaming this on uh, thursday at 7 p.m um where, where alicia will be helping in the background again so thank you alicia for today and for thursday that's it um, from me. Take care, everybody. Um, enjoy the rest of the day, wherever you are, um, whatever weather you have got. And I will see you again on Friday, so not very long now at all.